Hey guys, I bet you us, but um, I mean, you can't see us, but we are here for some reason. Something is uh, not working with a stupid little software and I cannot change it. So we will attempt something hardcore. Hardcore? Yes, which is going to be... Oh God, edit. Things, details. Oh God, I, we are live. But please hold the line while we explain some technical, technical difficulties. difficulties. Bear with, bear with. We'll be there. We'll be there. It is slowly loading. The software is not a pain. That's what's good. Anyway, <laughs> how you guys been doing? <laughs> You've been doing well. Oh, fun oh. times. Oh, YouTube. Uh, I think it's part of the software. Okay, we're back. You guys can see us. Fantastic. Okay. Hey, guys, welcome to your live session from NZ Pocket Guide. We're here to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of traveling in New Zealand. But Laura, why are we the experts? Well, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide because it literally has thousands and thousands. And we're working on more thousands of articles to help you plan the perfect trip to New Zealand, of course, when you are actually able because when? yes, yet again, at the time of recording, the border is still closed to international yes. travellers. One day I won't have to say that, but that's still the case. But if you're already in New Zealand, of course, now's a great time to explore the country. And if you're not in New Zealand, well, it's never too early to plan the perfect trip. So you can head over to nzpocketguide.com to get loads of free information and advice on everything to do with New Zealand, basically. And um, if you're not really into reading, that's what this live session is for right now. We come here every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. So you guys can ask your questions directly to us in the live chat. So ask away. So, uh, yeah, uh, as per usual, we're going to read all the comments. And uh, yeah, until all your questions, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we had uh, Robert Laliberte, which uh, left a comment. For some reason, it has been deleted by uh, by YouTube. So here you go. But he was telling us that where he is, it was very cold. And here it's very cold as well. So yeah, very cold where we are. We're having a big wave of coldness here in New Zealand. So yeah, that's why Laura is wearing a beanie today. It yes. is cold today. It, it is. is cold. Anthony Comstock says, Morena from Rodeo, California. Morena. Morena. What does Morena mean, Laura? That means good morning in the Maori language. And Maori are the uh, native people of New Zealand. Indeed. Nathan Baith, which is in Topo, he says, Kia ora. Good morning, Laura and Robin. I will not be here for the whole live session because of work. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I cannot believe work was scheduled during a live session. That is shocking. What is your boss thinking about? They are so inconsiderate. Oh, no. <laughs> Extreme Talata says, Morena. Morena. Adil says, Kiara, Robin and Laura, please address the border question from the outset. We will address the border question uh, during this live session for sure. We're just saying hi to everybody, uh, you know, at the beginning of Getting the live the session. Getting the pleasantries exactly. out of the way. Come, on. <laughs> Come on, don't rush us. Uh, Rack says, hi, guys. How are you all? We're doing pretty good. Are you sure? Yeah. Good. We're all doing well then. <laughs> Hot drink. Very cold. But yeah. Aside from the cold, we're doing well. <laughs> uh, Mod hey real hey real says which area would you recommend to stay in Auckland? Which area? Yeah. Well, I feel like if you're a first time visitor, it's always obviously the cent city centre has a lot to offer. There's a lot of things to see. You can go to the Auckland Museum. You can check out Queen Street and High Street and all the cool full, um, main funky streets of Auckland City. Funky, and that's the funky, word. Yeah. yeah, you can go to the Auckland Domain and check out Mount Eden, for instance. But if you have been to Auckland before and you're wanting to look somewhere new, then heading North Shore, so heading north of the Auckland region is always a good place to go. There's lots of beaches and uh, the, is it called Matakana? Oh, Makana, mm -hmm. Matakana Coast um, in that area that they have like a really good sort of farmer's market on the weekends. Um, snorkeling in Ley, which is uh, the Go Island Marine Reserve is really good over there as well. They have clear kayaking. So if you're looking for some more outdoorsy experiences, then heading north in Auckland is always, always good. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I agree with her. I, I, I 100% concur. I think like as a first time visitor to New Zealand, it's always better to stay in a CBD so you can do all your activities and, and all these kind of things. Um, and also there is uh, good ways from the CBD to escape Auckland and go and visit the rest of New Zealand because there's much more to New Zealand than just Auckland. Yes. Clay Bryan says, good morning all. How are you doing, Clay? How is the family going? And also, did you go to the Otago Peninsula last weekend? That's the question of the day. Mm. Um, okay, uh, Ashwin from India says, I just want to know how to go from New Zealand to Antarctica. Have you people visited? Have we been to Antarctica? We have not been to Antarctica. And you know why? Because the cheapest options we ever found was just above 10,000 New Zealand dollars per person. So it's that expensive to go there. So yeah, we, 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 we just cannot afford to go all the way to Antarctica from New Zealand. So we haven't been, but there are some options. There are some options. Are so options. the main ways to get there as, as a tourist is to hop on, well, just hop on, pay, pay a good amount of money to go on one of the few cruises that go to Antarctica and the sub Antarctic islands. Um, a lot of these cruises depart from uh, Dunedin, Invercargill and Bluff. And we do have an article on NZ Pocket Guide guides.com which is saying how to get to the antarctic and subantarctic islands um do something like that yes we do we actually do have some information on nzpocketguide.com about well answering that question basically in much more detail and saying which cruise companies are operating to go down there i think there's only one cruise company that actually takes you to antarctica itself but the other cruises sort of go to the subantarctic islands they have the cruise ships that are all kitted out for you know plowing through ice and all that good stuff so they do have really you know really good ships and they're small boat cruises you know they're not huge cruise liners they are um smaller but sturdy ships so you are getting sort of a small um cruise experience as well um so yeah so uh, yeah. guys it's on screen right now so if you want to check it out so it's the best ways to get to the antarctica and the sub -Antarctica. Islands from New Zealand. So here you go, Ashwin. Literally, Laura has done all the research for you. I have indeed. And um, how epic is that? I didn't even know we had an article on that. <laughs> wow. We cover everything. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that is insane. That yeah. Is so yeah, crazy. check out that that article. Other way, otherwise, other ways that people go to Antarctica is, you know, actually going there to work. And that's why Christchurch is kind of seen as one of the sort of gateways to Antarctica, because people that go on Antarctic exp ex expeditions expeditions mm -hmm. um they do take their sort of expedition flights from Christchurch to get there but that's not a really a touristy way to get over there but if you don't want to leave New Zealand and experience Antarctica there is the Antarctic Centre <laughs> in Christchurch where you can experience Antarctica for yourself and um if you want to learn more about that we do have a video on this channel of us do. visiting the Antarctic Centre so go check that out to see what that's like all right. Uh, we also have Clay that says, I'm going to kick it off early and ask about the borders. Feeling thirsty. It's five o'clock somewhere. So um, <laughs> just to get you into the inside joke, guys, Clay makes a joke every time someone asks us about the border, which actually Adil already asked uh, this morning. He's getting a shot. And since he's based in Dunedin, New Zealand, it is right now 8 11 in the morning for him so yeah um but yeah we will talk about that in a minute literally we're just finishing reading all the early comments and then we'll do the news and during the news we'll talk about that because you guys know there is some big news uh, about the borders mm -hmm. uh okay we have Rivin that says what's the current quarantine fee for new zealand citizen oh it's around three thousand yeah. new zealand dollars a little bit more than that at the moment but there's some ways to waive the fee but um it, it, it's most people will have to pay that, but uh, yeah. So that's about three thousand dollars right now. We have Eki Iken that says hi. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, we have in Christina Holden that says good morning. I, I hope you both are well. Are we well, Laura? We are very well. Thank cool. you for asking. Well. Hope you are well as well. As well. <laughs> As well, well. Da Daniel Craw Crawford says, uh, are you, uh, there's not the end of the question. So Daniel, I'll read your question when you finish it. To be continued. Yes. It's like a cliffhanger by <laughs> Daniel. I like it. Clay say it was great. The same than last time. Uh, so they went to the Banks Peninsula. Oh, yeah. He say, but Portobello pub meal made up for it. Oh, yes. Have you been to the fish and chip shop at Portobello? I hear that it's very good. Here you go. <laughs> and we have Ashwin that says, thank you, guys. Never thought uh, it was $10,000. Uh, in India, we can't buy one. We can buy one small house for that. <laughs> Why? Well, buy a house instead. Yeah. And leave I, the penguins alone. That will probably last a lot longer than, yeah. a, than a trip to the Antarctic. Um, I definitely see your article on your website. Thanks, guys. Yeah, check it out. All right, guys. 
Uh, so you're asking about the question. So let's do the news. Let's get it started. Welcome to New Zealand Travel News, the, the segment where we go over the news that people are looking to travel to or around New Zealand may care about. We are the team behind New Zealand's largest travel guides, New Zealand NZ Pocket Guide.com. Sorry about that. I am Robin and this is Laura. All right, let's start off with some quick news about the Olympic Games. So in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, New Zealand has seven gold medals, six silver medals and seven bronze. Um, and then next quick news is about the uh, vaccination rollout in New Zealand and where we're currently at. So the COVID-19 vaccination rate is currently at 15.7% of the population being fully vaccinated. So that's about uh, 795,000 people in New Zealand. So the, the percentage rate is slightly higher than that. There is different conflicting news about uh, so it's conflicting data about that, depending on the sources. But 795,000 people uh, fully vaccinated. So that's a good news for all. OK, let's move on to the bigger news. Uh, we're going from the least important, kind of like the more important. So we will wrap up with the biggest one. And stay tuned till the end. <laughs> so we have something from the NZ Herald published on the 2nd of August 2021. And it is titled COVID-19 coronavirus. PM Jacinda Arden says decisions coming on stalled residency applications. So Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has signalled the stalled residency application queue is next on its to-do list with decisions in short order. Due to COVID's impact on the Immigration Office, the go government suspended expressions of interest, the, I, the EOIs, selections for selected migrant categories in 2020. This has seen flocks of professionals, many of those on the country's skill shortage list, being forced to leave the country with them and their families' futures up in the air. Last week, the Herald reported Otaki GP Dr. Harding Richard, originally from Wales, departed the country for that reason, leaving behind 1,354 patients registered to him. Immigration Minister Chris Fafoy received advice on managing the situation in April, but is yet to make any decision. Adam said today, after previously announcing automatic extensions for those here on temporary visas, next on the list were those who were here and had put in residency applications. We will have something to say on that in short order, not months sooner than that. All right. So in short, there are a lot of people which are waiting for their uh, their residency, which have been putting some application, which are in New Zealand. There is a lot of people in limbo right now. And uh, basically, Immigration New Zealand is working on sorting everything out. And once they get a plan, they will actually do an announcement. That's basically just the prime minister saying that they are closer. Like, you know, they within weeks, we're going to be getting uh, some type of announcement. It's probably going to come after the August 12 announcement regarding the border policy, which we're going to cover that in a minute. Um, also, there are some RSE workers, which are basically workers which are coming uh, very often from the South Pacific to come and help with farm work in New Zealand, which are going to be allowed in the country since the South Pacific has been quite, um, I mean, um, um, uh, the nations where we get most of the worker from, i.e. Tonga and Samoa and everything, has been quite spared by COVID-19. Okay. Moving on to the next news. Next, we have something from The Guardian, published on the 5th of August, 2021, and titled, Vaccine Passports Look Inevitable, So What Rights Do New Zealanders Have? So, with greater numbers of people being vaccinated and countries looking to reopen borders safely, the introduction of some form of vaccine passport seems increasingly likely. For New Zealand, where the elimination strategy has been largely successful but which remains vulnerable to border breaches, proof of vaccination may well be a condition of entry. The Health Minister, Chris Hipkins, has said that this would be almost inevitable within the next year. Air New Zealand is one of a number of airlines already trialling the IATA Travel Pass initiative. In Britain, the Royal Society has warned of the potential of vaccine passports to restrict the freedoms of some individuals or to create a distinction between individuals based on health status. Furthermore, vaccine passports use sensitive personal information and cyber attacks on health sectors in New Zealand and overseas are a reminder that data security is not always guaranteed. Vaccine passports, aren't, vaccine passports aren't new. We should remember, however, that the freedom of movement across borders has been routinely regulated throughout history. 
Modern passports for international travelers have been in use for more than 100 years. Proof of vaccination is nothing new either. Some countries have required certificates for yellow fever vaccination for a number of decades. And the World Health Organization's yellow card vaccination document is, a, is familiar to many international travelers. So this article was first published in the conversation. Claire Breen is the professor of law of, at the University of Waikato in Hamilton. All right. So uh, that's addressing one of the big elephants in the room. A lot of people start complaining or start asking what vaccine uh, for what COVID-19 vaccine will be authorized for like traveling to New Zealand, which one is going to be the one which get the seal of approval. And also, will New Zealand require vaccination for travelers to come to the country? And, uh, you know, they, so therefore there's a little bit of debate right here. And we think that this is going to be, or at least for a certain amount of time, a requirement to come to New Zealand to have uh, the vaccine. Um, and it's nothing new. There's so many countries. I mean, Laura and I cover a lot the South Pacific um, with other travel guides, more than just nzpocketguide.com. We also run fijipocketguide.com, tongapocketguide.com, nuepocketguide.com, and, and, and such. And for those, for those countries, sometimes there are some mand mandatory vaccines to have when coming, or even some strongly recommended vaccines. So it's absolutely nothing new. But we will have to, as a, as a as humanity, we will have to balance this data issue as well, because data is extremely vulnerable. No matter what people are telling you right now, uh, you know, on how secure everything is, um, data is extremely, extremely vulnerable. We've seen that in New Zealand with the Waikato District of Health being hacked a few months ago, and literally um, they were held uh, at ransom by hackers because all the data of, of, of the, this health system was, uh, was basically taken in hostage and they couldn't operate very well. So... Yeah, let's just uh, let's just see how things develop. But we obviously do have to keep an, an eye up for the usage of data and also its security. But uh, moving on to the main news item of the day, which is an impending announcement coming up this week, which is exciting. Yes. So uh, this is from a source, uh, Justin Giovanetti of the spin-off, published on the 3rd of August 2021. So three big questions as Adam prepares to unfurl the roadmap to a post-COVID New Zealand. Mark August 12 in your calendar because it could be one of the most important discussions the country has this year. What does the end of COVID look like? The big questions around the future of New Zealand's COVID-19 response will take centre stage next Thursday when Jacinda Ardern unveils the advice she's received around reopening the country's border. While the Prime Minister has reiterated over the past year that the quarantine facilities and nearly shut borders won't be with New Zealand forever, Adam and her ministers have yet to speak in detail about when they might end. At a roundtable in Wellington next week, she plans to show her cards after months of work by a group led by Sir David Keg Skeg. Sorry, not Keg. Um, while there's a lot of gazing into the crystal ball, the government and Skeg's work is guided by what's been happening overseas, where some countries have shuttered their borders and reopened them in recent months. There, here are three of the big questions that Arden and her advisors will need to answer. When will enough of the population be vaccinated to loosen restrictions? When does the country begin to ease travel restrictions for vaccinated travellers? And when does MIQ end? And MIQ is Managed Isolation and Quarantine. All right, guys. So, yes, I'm pretty sure if you are watching this travel news video is because you were interested in... Um, in, in this piece of news in particular. So yes, on the 12th, which is Thursday, New Zealand time, there will be an announcement. We don't know what time just yet, but there will be an announcement with uh, the, the recommendation from that uh, expert. And that's very much likely what the New Zealand government will use as, it, as its base uh, to decide how to end this whole lockdown and, and everything like that. So um, this is going to give us really, really clear, a, a clear path into how we're going to be reopening the borders, right? So there's going to be multiple paths, and basically our prime minister will get to um, consult with his cabinet and pick which one is the most suitable path for our country. Uh, so yeah, we will cover this news in uh, in full because you know that we've been doing some border uh, border opening predictions, and I really want to know how wrong we were. I hope to be very wrong. I hope we opened much earlier. I hope I wasn't wrong the other way, and we opened much later. But yeah, so we will cover that. To so expect videos from us, mark your calendar. As I say, on Thursday we will be doing a video. I will cover that in depth. I will have the whole uh, transcript uh, of the meeting and, and and all that. 
So yeah, exciting times ahead. There may be a, an end of the tunnel ahead. So that'd be that'd be really good. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we do like to wrap up this uh, this news with a deal that our scouter around the internet, I'll find one and tell Laura, tell people, the good people about this good company that has a good deal. So what's the good company of the day? All right. So in travel deal news, we have Epic Campers are offering up to 20% off their rental rates. They're a small camper van rental company with quality but affordable campers. Ideal for couples, a couple of best mates or solo travelers. And you can pick up their vehicles from Auckland or Christchurch. There you go. They're actually a good company. Uh, we know them. We try them. They're really nice. So here you go. Um, Epic Campers, 20% uh, off. Yeah, check them out. Uh, yeah. There's a little video playing here if you're watching a replay of that. And uh, yeah, I think their website is epiccampers.co.nz, but you can find them, you know, With on the interweb. Google search. Yeah, on the <laughs> interweb. All right, guys, that wraps up this news segment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to reward all our hard work and stay up to date with all our videos. Plus, check out nzpocketguide.com for thousands of tips, hidden gems, and much more. All right, guys, let's go back to the live chat. Um, where were we? We had um, Ran Ranji Pluri that says, hey, um, hi, are you expecting that New Zealand will allow vaccinated travelers like Canada? I don't know if that's what we are expecting. Um, honestly, I feel like I feel like New Zealand has been kind of half copying what other countries have been doing successfully. So I'd love to look at how successful that was for Canada to see if New Zealand will do that. But I do expect that New Zealand will require vaccination at least for, for a while uh, for people coming to travel to New Zealand. So, um, and we're talking about travelers and tourists and everything like that. So yeah, definitely. Boo. Hello. How is it going in Turkey for you? <laughs> are you warm enough? We are very cold here in New Zealand, it's winter. <laughs> uh, Claire is boasting about New Zealand's performance at the Olympics saying that per capita we're doing pretty well on medals we do pretty well at everything per capita it's too easy to do it like that we're the no, biggest no, no. book reading nation per yes. capita we have the highest amount of cars per capita we have um, what else is like the, well yeah sheep per capita most amount of sheep per capita most amount of golf courses per capita <laughs> you can do everything <laughs> per capita mate it's, too, it's an easy win Sally Haig say, hello, I love you, Taranaki Falls Hike. Will you be Ooh. doing any more videos like this? I just watched you 365 gap year videos for the second time, and I just love them. Wow. That's awesome. That's a lot of videos to watch. Uh, cool. Sally, doing this Taranaki Falls video was, uh, yeah, we may, we, may do, we may do one of those again. Um, it is just, I don't know, it, it doesn't gather many views. and everything. It looks like people basically don't like it. So I like the fact that you voice that you like it because it kind of, Put a face onto somebody that likes this kind of video, but usually people don't tend to like those kind of videos much. So yeah, there are a lot of work to do. But yeah, you know what? Why not? Well, Laura is planning a hike for us not so long from now, so I may I may end up having to do a video because Laura is going to poke me. Yeah. All right. Um. No, I would do it with happiness, thinking <laughs> of you, Sally. <laughs> Daryl says, "Good morning, guys from Manila. Here, stay safe." How are you doing, Daryl? How is it going for you in the Philippines? Are you safe in the Philippines, and are you happy over there? That's that's important. And I do like how you're showcasing your geography knowledge with, uh, you know, you know the capitals of every well, country. I uh, don't miss, uh, don't 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 quiz me. I know from, some. If you are from a rather obscure country, please say, state your capital, and we'll see if Robin knows where that is. Okay, this is not a game. This is not becoming a game. <laughs> what is the new poll going to be today? Like, uh, uh, I have to come a, up with a poll. Yeah, are you from a? a obscure country with an obscure capital let um, us know <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have nathan that says he's going bye bye nathan bye nathan enjoy uh, work yes and he's always stealing the um stealing uh, anthony's sentence uh, which is kind of fun we have <laughs> we have a bit of a competition for that sentence i love it now kalo says hi guys have you heard about the southern light flight out of christchurch Yep. Uh, so that was run by New Zealand. I was just doing a stunt of like getting people basically in planes and trying to make some money during COVID. I don't expect it to become a thing. It's a. It is run think... by a. Com I did some research on it. Yeah, it, okay. it is run by a commercial company that do oh, no, have. Okay. They cool. have set dates throughout the year. Very oh. obviously, very you know 
it very limited Isn't dates. Air New Zealand did one of them during, during I think they use oh. the Air New Zealand planes. Okay. Yeah, so we do have information about that, actually, which Robin doesn't know about. No, okay, go for <laughs> it. We do have information about that on nzpocketguide.com. If you head to our... I'm going to um, do it. I'm going to do it. Let me, let me just load it. Yeah, the, the best times, and I think it's entitled The Best Times and Places to See the Southern Lights in New Zealand toward the end of the article. We do have a short section on the different ways to see the Southern Lights from Ireland. And within that section, we do have a quick mention about the company that offers those flights. But yes, they are very, um, very, very limited flights throughout the year. I think they only happen during winter because that is, or, or at least sort of early, early spring. Um, that's generally the best time to see the Southern Lights. So that's why they do that. Um, but yeah, if you want to find more information, Robin is going to find it on the website for you guys right now toward the end of that article. Uh, I'll tell you, please, I'll slick you my stargazing in your aura display. Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's probably somewhere. Yeah, it's a yeah. long article. It's uh, a lot of pe it's it's quite a popular one of ours. So in New Zealand, can you see the Southern Lights? Is that correct? Is that where the part? E possibly. possibly or no, bit it's not down. there. Or maybe tools to Is see it Horizon Tools? Yeah. Yeah, it's Horizon Tools. Right. Yeah, here you go. Horizon Tools. Here you go. Boom. You get the game. You know it now. Boom. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, we haven't been on the flight ourselves, no. um, obviously, because it is it is very exclusive and we're, we're not good enough. <laughs> no, but it's also, it's also about timing. Like, very often when we travel, you know, the start and light, it's... Although we do have some articles on to, like, when to plan to go there, this... It is still requires some luck to be able to actually get the, you know, uh, not overcast and all these kind of things. So there is there is a little bit of luck in there. And sadly, we've never really been that lucky yeah. because we never really have that much flexibility when we travel. As when we travel, we're always doing it for work, for inside pocket guide and, and all that. We're always on some kind of a tight schedule. And so for this reason, we never have the flexibility of staying somewhere for a week, hoping that we're going to get the right condition at some and point. And making so, sure that we stay up till midnight in the right place being able to see the southern lights but yeah yeah uh Ezekwe, ezekiel blanco says what do you think about brexit in the uk three words <laughs> um um <laughs> um uh, uh, don't understand there's okay. something always happening with that that's always you know i live in new zealand now so obviously the only sort of way that personally affects me is that I have a British passport, so if I was to travel perhaps throughout Europe, which I have no plans to do, it might affect me. But yeah, it's something that I don't keep a tabs on. It's something that when I am reading the news about it, there's a lot of speculation. It's it's a bit like the borders opening in New Zealand, really. There's a lot of speculation, not a lot of actual hard sort of news happening. A lot of, you know, it's still in a process of sorting itself out, so... So I don't understand is probably go. the best way to for me to describe that. Three words. Uh, okay, Henry says, please, are they not planning on opening borders for people offshore with work visa? Henry, you've got to rewind. We just covered that in that new section. So there is going to be an announcement on the August the 12th. And during this announcement, they will actually explain their basically their plan forward and see how that works. Plus, Immigration New Zealand will contact people that have applied with the visas and everything like that and uh, work with them to see what's the what's the next path forward. So there is a couple of news happening. So stay tuned on the channel. Make sure you hit subscribe. I will do a video on the 12th covering that announcement. So, yeah. Uh, Clay says, no news jingle this week. Well, Clay, I don't know if you noticed, but every Monday I publish the news video now and there is a whole jingle with the music that I was singing so yeah uh, you should check this one out it's it's called new zealand travel news it's like blue and pink like the the thumbnail uh, check it out after this video on the channel you can watch the one from last week and uh, yeah there is the jingle yeah. uh kalo says also have you heard of the clothing company earth sea sky for cold weather gear um i have it's similar to like the north face it's not really widely available here in new zealand so we're dealing with other companies such as like icebreaker and the North Face, just the thing that we can find in New Zealand. I don't think there's that many outlets that you can find this in the country. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, from what I've seen, they look cool. And, yeah, here you go. Um, Clay says, come to Dunedin to see it. He's probably talking about the Southern Lights. Say it's pretty cool. Well, Clay, if you're lucky enough to see them, make sure you film them and you send it to us. We'll put that in news. Clay, Clay, see Clay, the, see Southern, the Lights. Southern Lights. <laughs> Breaking news. 
And Anthony was telling me about the screen. Yes, there was a little bug on the screen. And while Laura was talking, I uh, did fix that. So here you go. We're still making our way around this new little studio right here, guys. Okay, we're still working, making sure that everything works well. This morning, it was panic. There's some cables which are in uncomfortable places underneath around here right now because uh, things were not charging and everything. So working on it. Just yeah. give a, you know, which yeah. give us two, three weeks. You no, know, we, every time we change things, it usually takes us two, three weeks to get a new rhythm. And then it's going. It's the same for the travel news, you know, like the way we read the news and everything, like, uh, like you know, not having the paper covering our faces and everything at that point. Instead, so we're working on those kind of things at the moment. But and, yeah. your feedback is always super helpful, exactly. guys. So if you like, uh, like the comment that we've just had, if you do see anything that you think should be changed, or you think there's some things like, oh, it looks like there's a book there, anything like that. Let us know. Yeah. That's always really helpful. No, it is. It seriously is. And same thing for the, um, for the website, for nzpocketguy.com. Make sure you tell us if there's things you would improve and everything like that because, yeah, there is, there is a, lot of, um, yeah, a lot of things to improve. Actually, Anthony says, I like the old sets better. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Hopefully, this one will grow on you when, we, when you guys give us donations. We can put a <laughs> TV right here and then we have a screen here and we can show you more stuff and, and because more practical. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it will grow on you as it grows on us as well. Uh, okay, uh, quick. No, oh no, we have some more comments. I had some stuff to say. Jeez, I'm never going to be able to say anything. Uh, Raihan says, um, I hope I pronounced your name properly, Raihan. I probably I didn't, but says, when the New Zealand border will open for international students? Uh, so, first of all, you can rewind to the beginning of this video where we talked over the recent travel news and when there's going to be some more announcements on when the borders are going to open for New Zealand. Just Second of all, Claire needs to take a shot. <laughs> yeah. Third of all, um, so you can check out uh, the Ministry of Education website, which Robin will put on. Can yeah. you put that on yeah. the screen? Oh, can I, can uh, the, I, I do not know. That is, there's a lot of questions with this new set, Laura. I will okay. try. <laughs> so Robin will attempt to put uh, the website address for the Ministry of Education, which gives uh, particularly students updates on the borders opening, for instance. But uh, in short, there's no new information of when the borders are going to be open for international students. So, yeah, we unfortunately can't tell you a date or anything like that at this time. But we have... It is on. Okay, Robin's put it on the screen for you. We have our fingers crossed for you guys to be able to come to the country soon. Yes, that would be a good thing. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, we also have... Oh, so Ray, Rayhan says I pronounced it... Rayhan. No, nah, no, nah, I pronounced it wrong. But he said <laughs> I, I was right the first time. So that's good. Nice. Uh, Joe Washington says, Hello, guys. Thank you for coming on. Any update? Any updates? As in... The borders opening, I perhaps Probably. perhaps it tends to be the question that's asked. Um, so like I said uh, before, if you rewind to the be beginning of this live session, we do go through the latest travel news concerning the borders. But in short, there has no been there has not been any official date announced for when the borders are going to open. However, you can check out our border. Uh, a border predictions video, which Robin's going to put the address up on the screen right now, if it isn't nope. already. Oh, he's not? Nope. Okay, so that's not working. <laughs> but if you search on YouTube, on our channel, our border border opening predictions video, you'll get some more context, more information for when the borders may or may not open. But most importantly for you, Joe, on the 12th, literally on Thursday, the New Zealand government will announce its path forward. That's the big news of the week. And therefore, we will be doing a video then. So literally only a handful of days to wait until we actually have a way forward and, and some news on the subject so stick around make sure to hit subscribe and on the 12th of august mark your calendar we will make a video and we will cover that very important announcement and that's the 12th of august in England. yes uh okay what do we have uh Kalo says when's the last time you went to australia i don't think you've ever been to australia have you? i've never no. been to australia uh the last time i went to australia was i was in new zealand i was there so probably two uh, I probably about 10 years ago, something like that. About 10 years ago, uh, I went to Melbourne. Uh, it's not my thing. I'm not a big fan of Australia, in all fairness. I had to go there for work, so I, I went there. Um, we had planned to actually pass through Australia for some travels uh, before COVID, and uh, we were planning on staying a weekend over there. But sadly, COVID happened, and so it didn't happen. But yeah, we may get to Australia just as a, just just for work for for the both of us. We may have to go to Australia uh, post COVID, so maybe twenty twenty 
2023 for like a, a short period of time. We may we may just say hi to you guys from there. But yeah, it's definitely not one of our focus. Our focus is definitely uh, New Zealand and the South Pacific Islands. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to give some news about the channel right here. So we're doing a few changes to the channel this week. Uh, not just making a set look nicer, or, or uh, not according to Anthony, making it way worse, but all the videos now are going to come out at 7 p.m. New Zealand time. So usually our videos are coming out at 6.30 a.m. I'm trying something new. Um, see if uh, you know you guys get to see the video more and everything like that, um, because basically... Most people don't watch our videos lately. So, not, so that's I'm not the live new. session. The live no, session no. still... live session stays at exactly the same time and yeah. nothing changes there. But all of all the videos, uh, anything that we scheduled, um, are going to come at 7 p.m. And there is some new shows coming up and everything like that. So, yeah, stay tuned and keep an eye on that. Hit subscribe if you want to see those videos popping up on your YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's why people don't watch, because I don't tell you guys to subscribe <laughs> enough, according to YouTube. Um... Kalo says, do you say sweet as a lot? I obviously say it more than before I came yeah. to New Zealand. It's not something that I say. It's not something that we kind of say a lot, but it's usually in messages. You know, when you're you're messaging your friends and you're meeting up somewhere and you usually conclude the message with like sweet, sweet as. as. Like yeah, that, yeah, we yeah. do that a lot. So maybe we don't say it a lot, but we definitely find ourselves like, you know, putting it in messages. Yeah. Sweet as. Sweet Moving as. On. <laughs> JD says, Morena. 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 <laughs> and he says, I hope there are opportunities for those that had work travel visa that expired during the pandemic. But I'm not too hopeful, sadly. Looking forward to the update, though. Thanks, as always, for the information. You're very welcome. Um, like, the thing is, I think that the, so the, the announcement on the 12th is going to cover the, the road forward for the, the border openings. And then afterward, there's going to be a work, like a, an immigration New Zealand kind of announcement. I think that even if you didn't get to use your work visa, I think that is going to be a way to apply for that visa in an easier way. If you were really part of like the skill shortage kind of kind of area. Um, however, for people that just got like basic stuff like a working holiday, I think that sadly that's going to have to be a write off right here. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that works. But yeah. usually, like more, like and people that have like families here and everything, and then ties here, I think they're gonna work harder for those. But people that have the basic kind of like just basic work visa, I think that's gonna be a tough one. But again, it's just speculation. We'll have to wait for the announcement. Axel says, hopefully next year I visit New Zealand when they open the borders. Greeting from Argentina. Ooh, Ooh nice. What's nice. the capital of Argentina? Capital of Argentina. Is it La Paz? No, it's not. I don't think it's La Paz. Why is San No Santiago is Chile? What is Argentina's is capital? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is no, Brazil, isn't Brazil. it? Yeah. No, Rio de Janeiro is <laughs> Buenos Aires is in Brazil. Is well, Buenos Aires the capital of Argentina? Oh no! What's the capital? Oh, of Robin Argentina? has failed ah! the test of the capitals. Literally, the next the time that happens. Oh my god. Anyway, what's the capital of Argentina, Axel? Come on, don't let me uh don't let me finish this live session, stupid. <laughs> if you guys know, can you write it down in the live chat? Okay, Clay says, I used to live in Portobello. So it's an area oh. near the Nidon, guys. And he says, so when the conditions are right, it was a quick drive to Allen's Beach to view. Um, then a little harder now that he's in town. But we'll sure to get a better picture next time. Uh, we use the app and head out. So mm. that's, uh, he's talking about the southern lights. Um... Mosen, that's emoji guy, he says, uh, hi, dear Robin and Lauren. Lauren? Yes, he called you Lauren. I like it. <laughs> My name's Lauren, not Lauren. <laughs> and then well, that's Joe, okay. I get that a lot. <laughs> Joe says, uh, Joe Washington says, how is the process like to move over to New Zealand? How is the process like? Yeah, you know, we can't answer that, sadly. Yeah. So um, if you're talking, uh, you know, immigration wise and visas, uh, that sort of thing, then unfortunately, we can't give you sort of detailed advice on how to immigrate to New Zealand because there is a law in New Zealand stating that you cannot give immigration advice unless you are an immigration advisor, which we are not. But if you do want more information on moving to New Zealand, then it's best to head over to the immigration website, which Robin is putting on the screen right now. Yes, immigration New Zealand, that's the best source to start with 
we're planning how to move to New Zealand. Yes. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, tips and advice and everything like that. But yeah, sadly, we can't tell you anything. We can't. It's just the law in New Zealand. Yeah. So here you go. All right, guys. Uh, so another. So I was uh, hinting at new shows coming up. So one of the things that we've been doing as well is that we've been looking at how to um, uh, show things a bit more mainstream in the, in the more mainstream way and everything like that to help you guys. So we decided to start a new series called What Is It Really Like? So we're going to take some of the biggest attractions that we really that we already visited and we'll tell you what is it really like to do that too or to spend that money to do this thing or to spend that time to do go do that walk or that this or that that and uh, help you guys decide if it's really worth your big bucks. So yeah, that's called What Is It Really Like? And that should come out every Saturday from now on. So I hope that you guys are going to like it. Um... Joe says, thanks so kindly. And Clay says, NZ Pocket Guy with Robbie and Lauren. <laughs> I should be called Robbie. That's yeah. a cool name. <laughs> Everybody call me Rob. I don't like to be called Rob. Yeah. Why do people call me Rob? Your fa his Facebook name is Rob. So if anybody ever meets us first on Facebook uh, oh, or yes. maybe doesn't catch his name while we meet each other, he like, you know, we put different names on Facebook just for, you know, just for privacy reasons. And then people think that's our actual names. And then... That that's it. That's it from there. We Rob, Robin becomes Rob with our I've friendship. I've been introduced group. by my Facebook name, i.e., fake last name and, and Rob uh, during a conference, and that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> uh, ah, that's fine. <laughs> Pretty much only you guys know that his real name is Robin. <laughs> Everyone else, all our friends call him Rob, but that's not the name he chooses to be called anyway. So, yeah, that's funny. Martina says hello. And then she said, Laura's right. Buenos Aires is the capital of Argentina. Yes. Hey, you go. Oh, and South America is like an area that we'd never kind of know all the capitals of and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. We need to work on that. Yes, I will work on my geography, I promise. Mm -hmm. Just because you pointed out, I, I would have said nothing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry that I drew you into yes. the spotlight with that. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike Padonan says, Good day. Are you going to open the borders for international international students as well? I'm from the Philippines. Thank you. And the capital of the Philippines in Manila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we going to open the borders for international students, Laura? Um, so as I've said previously in this video, uh, we have had this question already, but I, I don't mind answering it again. Um, now, unfortunately, there has been no official announcements for when the borders are going to open. However, if you do stay tuned um, to New Zealand news for August 12th, New Zealand times, that yep. is going to be... August 12th. Uh, still no, I'm just, uh, I was just checking. Still no, um, no time announced but on august 12th will we yes announcement? on the august on august 12th there is going to be announcement from the new zealand government of uh, you know the the path forward for opening the borders for new zealand so make sure that you do stay tuned um and also yeah subscribe to this channel so because we'll cover that as well um so yeah that there's no official announcements that have been made just yet so in terms of the borders opening for international students even there's no new information. However, it's best to go over to the uh, Ministry of Education website for New Zealand. Do you want to put that on screen or is it already up there? Ministry of Education. I can do that on screen. I can put it on screen. I promise. So Robin is going to put the Ministry of Education um, website address up on screen. If you head over there, that's the best place to go if you're an international student because they do cover the borders opening and the latest updates for international students on that website. It's an official government website. So head over there. Hey, Get your information from there, and yeah, hope that is hope that is helpful to you, even though it's probably not the answer that you're yeah. wanting. Yeah. So, but yeah, I would definitely cover that in 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 videos, right? And what I'm planning on doing is to have you got just the transcript of the chat literally on screen, so it's like the raw, pure kind of information that we get, rather than any kind of coverage or anything like that. So you got all the information there. So I hope I'm going to be able to manage that on the 12th. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the plan. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have in Clay that's asked, what's the capital of Uruguay? I know this one. Do you? Yes, I know this one because it's such a weird name, uh, you know, of a city, in my opinion. But yeah, Montevideo, if I'm correct, oh. hopefully. But yeah. Um, if anyone's got uh, got the time to, you know, yeah, give, give fact a, check me. Fact yeah. check that one quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, if I remember, anyway, your your wife, Lou, is, she's from Uruguay, isn't she? And so, yeah. So, so you she, should know that off the top exactly, of your head. Exactly, yeah. You shouldn't have to correct me, do you? <laughs> Christina is talking to Clay. Okay, Robert says, change of subject, read the border, news update, please read. 
If someone comes to your front door and asks you to remove your clothes and dance with your arm in the air, what is he on about? <laughs> what is Robert's always saying weird things? He says, Do not do this. It is a scam. They just want to see you naked. I wish I had received this yesterday. I oh. feel so stupid now. Oh no, did yeah. you fall for that? Classic. Yeah, so, yeah, just 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 so you guys know if that happens, just you know, be aware. Thank thanks, Rob. <laughs> Robert is always coming with some nonsense. I like it. But Robert is behind giving us a lot of like the, the news and, and, you know, like the thing that we should be talking about. And he's that on off news producer. Yes. yes. He's and been he's... slacking off a little bit recently. No, but... he's been really good this oh, week. Has he? Uh, no, it's just last week. Last it was, week. It was, okay. there, was, there was a slow news week. So it's not it, yeah. So when it's a slow. Don't bash Robert. <laughs> when it's a slow news week, things are a little bit more challenging. But we so do... we, bash, we bash your jokes, which are terrible. But you work with the news is great. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we always need some input of dad jokes anyway. It's very important. Uh, Mike says, uh, very helpful, especially the website. Stay safe. Thank you, Laura and Robin. You're very welcome, Ooh. Mike. And yeah, nice message. Yeah. And if you want to check out our website, nzpocketguide.com, feel free to check it out as well. So this is the largest travel guide to New Zealand. We put a lot of work into that. Uh, and Clay confirms that his partner is from there, so he better get it right with the fact check. So, was I right or not? Is the capital of Uruguay Montevideo? I think he's still not? Googling it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, how do you spell Uruguay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's Uruguay you say in English, not you. Uh, yes, that's know. what I've been, I've yeah. heard, but it's probably not pronounced like that in the Uruguay land. Uh, ideal says suggestion why not build shelves on the wall behind you for Whitbix and uh, a New Zealand pocket guide sign I'm afraid that I might bash my head on shelves behind us yeah, that, that, I'm that a little bit right. clumsy so that could I feel like that might be a health and safety issue what, what do you think Robin um, my goal is to replace this canvas right here with a TV screen right so I can show you things on screen you know we can have like you know uh, uh, some videos of things that we talk about we can have a map of New Zealand that we can interact with and all these kind of things so that's my ultimate goal. However, that will cost about 500 bucks. So, yeah, we'll need you guys to give us donation. But, you know, uh, in the meantime, we'll have to wait quite a while until we get uh, we get this 500 bucks to do that. You know, it'll take six or seven months. So, yeah, uh, that's the goal right here. So that's why I don't want to build shelves because if I build shelf, I have to take them down. And I like to not build things to take them down. So therefore, I have to build something else. So I'd like to do a TV screen right here. That's my ideal. And Winbix now, by the way, uh, since you guys are have been, uh, you know, telling us off, he's nearby. He's nearby. Look at that. Winbix is here. So he's just watching us. He's not behind us. He's our uh, uh, director, director extra. He's behind the camera. Exactly. He's on the director's chair. Yeah, yeah. So he has, he has <laughs> his director's chair, chair saying Winbix and he sits on it. Like, yeah. So Winbix is around. So here you go. Don't, uh, yeah, don't panic. He's here. He's with us now. But yes. <laughs> I sadly did forget about him on our first live session in new um, in new stuff. Much to the dismay of many of our I viewers. cannot believe I forgot it. Um, okay. Uh, Emoji Guy says, Laura, sorry for butchering your name. What's uh, the good and interesting place in Auckland City? Cool meals, shop, views, parks, and etc. if any. All right. Give your... Mm. Couple, uh, couple of tips about I Auckland. would say, in terms of parks, uh, sort of under underrated park which is right in the city center is albert park um that's just behind the auckland art gallery so you can go check that out while you're there um but just yeah just behind the auckland art gallery is this uh it, it's it's kind of a small park but it has some really cool trees some really sort of you know gangly sort of big trees you can go climb if that's what you're into that's what i'm into and uh <laughs> she is actually when she sees a big tree like that she tries to climb it so yeah there's there's some nice tree really interesting trees good photography opportunities if you're into that and there's also a nice water feature so that that's sort of an underrated park right in the city center that i would recommend checking out yeah a uh, good place to eat or a good place for coffee uh, a good place uh, for lunch or two or for breakfast or coffee is The Shelf. This is on High Street, right in the city centre. What we love the most about The Shelf is actually their hot chocolates. They do really fancy ones where, you know, you're pouring the Belgian chocolate, you get a little stick of Whitakers to stir it. They do those pretty well over there. And it's just a really, it's a small cafe, but a really nice sort of environment and cool sort of booths and things. So that's that's another recommendation. And where do you get the best views? The best views, well, obviously, right in the city centre, the best views are from the Sky Tower. So 
Obviously, people have heard of that. It's the highest building in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the iconic building of Auckland. So that's right in the city centre. But if you're willing to get out a little bit away from the city centre, it's a, maybe maybe about half an hour to an hour walk from the city centre is Mount Eden. And that is, a, it's an extinct volcano. You can, it's a short walk up to the top. It's the highest natural point in Auckland City. So therefore, you do get really good views from there. I also do like the view from an island called Rangitoto Islands, where it's an extinct volcano. So you can walk there. There's a native bush. There's also lava fields and everything. You climb all the way on top. It's it's an easy walk. Like It's great for families and everything. And from the top, you get a great view of the Auckland skyline, but also the whole Hurricane Gulf with all the different islands and everything. It's a fantastic view. So it's definitely well worth um, the, the few bucks to take the ferries and go there. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I concur with the chef. Amazing hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a quick guide of Auckland for you, emoji guy. Uh, what do we have? Christina and Clay are chit-chatting. Christina says, hang, hang wig beaks from the ceiling is what my husband suggested. What would you hang him? What is he Around done? from the neck. That would look really sort of... I mean, has he been convicted of piracy or something? I mean, he's not a pirate in the, in, you know, in the, 1900, in the 1800s. No, yeah. don't hang. No. Tell your husband. Tell him to shush. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious, no. though. But I think new viewers, Rude. Rude. new viewers would be very concerned. They'd be like, "What is this? What is this live session? Yeah. The live hanging of a kiwi bird?" Oh, that would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Alejandra Raven uh, Ravanera says, "When open borders to Filipino tourist visa? When are the Filipinos can come to New Zealand, Laura?" So there's been no. Official new announcement for when the but borders when can they get are news? going to open. But stay tuned for New Zealand news or stay tuned with our channel because on August 12th in New Zealand, that is when there's going to be a new announcement of how the borders are going to open in the future. It's basically we're going to get more information of how the like the border openings and all that sort of good stuff is happening from August 12th. So fate. Yeah, stay tuned for that yes. to listen to more information. Also, Clay, try to stay tuned. You must be hammered by now. Yeah. Um, moving on, we have Printing Shop uh, South Africa says, Good morning. I'm joining you later because in South Africa, it's now night. Yeah, what mm. time is it in South Africa? Cape Town is the capital of South Africa, by the oh, way. Just wow. saying, I think, I hope, I hope I'm correct. <laughs> Am I correct? Is Cape Town the capital of South Africa? Hopefully. Okay, and Clay says I was correct with Montevideo, and he tells us where his wife is from. I'm not going to read that, just for privacy reasons, just in case that's a lot of information. You know, they may be able to find her. We have a really cool question that we may talk about for, uh, for you know, that may take pique our interest for we why right here. And these questions come from Chandler Sharp and says, Hello, what scuba or snorkeling spots do you recommend in New Zealand? So there is a lot of places to scuba and snorkel in New Zealand, and we actually have visited quite a fair amount of them. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's combine them a little bit together and, and talk about different spots that we like. And uh, shall you get started? What about you? Do I would like to get started. Yes, you get started. Yeah. So um, one of the top spots for scuba diving in New Zealand has to be Poor Knights Islands. So this is just off the coast of Tutukaka from the North Island. The biggest city closest to there would be Whangarei. And yeah, so there's dive shops in Tutukaka, which can take you by boat to the Poor Knights Islands, which is a marine reserve. The islands themselves are protected. So the whole area around there is is really thriving with lots of wildlife and lots of fish. So scuba diving over there, you can go there as a beginner. We have a video on NZ, well, on our website, no, on our YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. This is the thing right here. Yeah. So we do have a video <laughs> on our YouTube channel of us experiencing this for ourselves. So if you want to check it out and see what that's like to do a beginner's dive there. But of course, if you are certified, you can get a lot more out of the experience. There's lots of volcanic formed archways and caves to explore. So that's really exciting. There's a lot of wildlife around there. So totally recommend Poor Knights Islands. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go too far from Poor Knight Island. It's uh, it's still around, around the northern part of the North Island. And I'm going to talk about Goat Island Marine Reserve. It's a fantastic place to go do, uh, not scuba diving. Oh, you can do scuba over there, but I mean, you're better off just doing snorkeling because it's quite shallow. Yeah. Um, it is a marine reserve. There is a lot of snappers to look at. There's a lot of fish. It's phenomenal. And another great thing you can do there if you don't feel like jumping in the water, which 
why wouldn't you since you asked that question Chandler but you can do clear kayaking so it's kind of kayaks which are you know clear they clear bottoms basically and you can see through them and yeah it's a fantastic place to snorkel at next place Laura um I would go to the Bay of Islands again this is on the north North Island of New Zealand. Uh, the nearest town is Paihia, and there's a few dive shops in that area. Paihia Dive is a good is a good company to go with, and they can take you. For instance, if you're a certified diver, there's the Canterbury Wreck Dive, which is really awesome, really exciting. Um, we've seen some really cool pictures coming from that, so that's really good. But if you're a beginner diver, there's also some really amazing kelp forests to explore in New Zealand. And that's kind of what the scuba diving mainly is in New Zealand, is going through kelp forests, which at first doesn't sound as exciting as, for instance, coral. Obviously, coral get, you know, it has like a big sort of reputation, amazing scuba diving in coral, but kelp forests do have a lot of different fish species and a lot of things to see. So again, we do have a video on this channel of us scuba diving in the Bay of Islands, or at least I was scuba diving in the Bay of Islands because Robin had a broken arm, so he couldn't join. Yeah, I had to break it, so it was mandatory. Yes, so yeah, he, he did what he could to not go on that. Uh, no, I love scuba diving. Okay, next up. Yeah. Is a scuba dive that uh, we haven't had a chance to do because it's so weather dependent, especially if you are not certified. And it's in Milford Sound. In Milford Sound, you actually can scuba dive over there and you are able to witness black coral, which is quite amazing. Next up for you, Laura. I haven't got a next one No, yet. you don't want to take us to Mercury Island. Mercury Island's in the Coromandel, yes. So we, it's another place. <laughs> I was just like trying to remind myself what yeah. the other places were. So... Uh, in the Coromandel, where it's famous for places like Hotwater Beach and Cathedral Cove, you can also go scuba diving there. So particularly from Fitianga, there is a dive shop there where you can go out to the Mercury Islands just off the shores of the Coromandel. And again, it's an amazing place to do scuba diving around kelp forests. Check out some octopus, check out whatever crazy fish species you can yeah. find. Yeah. And uh, we'll wrap it up with uh, quite an epic dive that you can be doing uh, in New Zealand. And it's a, it's you know, it's not really controversial, but it's a, it's a different type of dive, uh, dive, and it's uh, it's in a cage, and you can see some amazing sharks, and that is off the shore of Stewart Island, so it's between the South Island, and all the way at the bottom of the South Island, and you can see beautiful sharks there. There are some great white sharks. Obviously, the viewings are, you know, it's it's wildlife, so you never know if you're going to be able to see them, but that's quite fantastic to be able to do that as well. Other. Um, scuba or snorkeling kind of spots to worth mentioning is around Kaikoura obviously you can uh, you can do scuba uh, with uh, seals they seal swim Kaikoura which is one of my favorite activity to do in New Zealand and you can also uh, do snorkeling with uh, dolphins. dolphins and there's plenty of options uh, around New Zealand so Laura do you want to give us some options of snorkeling with dolphins in New Zealand yeah so Toranga which is in the North Island has yep. a really good really good dolphin swimming. There's also in Akaroa in the South Island, they do dolphin swimming with the smallest smallest species of dolphins in the world called Hectors dolphins. And where else can you do dolphin swimming? You can- Kaikoura. Uh, Kaikoura, we yeah. already mentioned. Oh, I talk about the seals, but you can oh, do dolphins yeah. so yeah, as well. Kaikoura yeah. as well, where you can see dusky dolphins, very playful, acrobatic dolphin species. There you and go. Well, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty yeah. good. There, there, is, there are some obscure others, but uh, yeah. That is uh, some amazing places to swim with dolphins. All right, guys. So if you did find this video useful, make sure to hit like. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We do a lot of videos like this where we help you plan your trip to New Zealand. And check out nzpocketguide.com for thousands of tips, hidden gems, and much more. Bye-bye. All right, let's go back to the live chat. Uh, what do we have right here? Uh, Christina said that her husband was just being silly, he doesn't want to hang a kiwi, but good, 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 good. Say so he's being silly as usual. Uh, Clay is getting absolutely hammered. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, so I was wrong. The capital of South Africa is Pretoria, not Cape Town. Okay, I don't know oh, why. Yeah. Is Cape Town like it's probably the most popular city? I feel like that's a city you know. hear a lot yeah. about. Yeah, Pretoria is the capital of South Africa. Here you go, come back next week and quiz me, and I'll forget, but yeah. Uh, and he says it's midnight right now, basically. Wow. wow. Very late. Very late for this live session. Anthony Comstock says, stay safe, but I'm here until the end. Yep, yep. Uh, literally one minute. We are wrapping things up. Mm -hmm. Clay says, is it true the beach is warmer up there in the north? Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it is warmer. Yeah. You I mean think... swimming swimming from the beach? Or... Well, I guess so. I yeah. Mean... 
So yeah, I don't I, temperature of sand has to be boring. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think the water temperatures are, are marginally, marginally warmer in the North Island than they are in the South Island. That's for sure. And Chandler says, Kelp Forest are awesome. Great. Thank you very much from Texas, USA. Mates, uh, if you want even more uh, scuba diving spots and everything like that, check nzpocketguide.com. I'm going to put the address is in the description of the video, but I'm going to put it on screen again. And on there, we have a full article with the best scuba diving spots in New Zealand. So those were only the one that came uh, from the top of our heads, which technically make them the best because that's the one that were the most memorable because yeah. we pretty much did. All the one we talked about, there's like three that we haven't done that we talked about right now, but most of the time we we, we do all those. Um, so yeah, so check nzpocketguide.com. There is a link right here. And just type scuba uh, in the search box and you'll find all articles with all these, with much more descriptions like links and all these kind of things and photos and all that. So that may be uh, super useful to you if you're planning a scuba trip to New Zealand because it's, it's pretty awesome. And also if you're planning a scuba trip to New Zealand, what about if you come all the way from Texas, what about you come to New Zealand? And what about you plan, like, you know, let's say a, a three weeks trip and you do two weeks in New Zealand and you pick one of the South Pacific islands to go to. I would recommend Tonga or Nui. We do have TongaPocketGuide.com or NuiPocketGuide.com, which is all uh, same thing, the travel guide. And feel free to come back and to ask follow up questions. I'll give you the links and all that. But if you plan a trip to some of the South Pacific islands, you have some amazing scuba diving opportunities there. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm getting... I'm, I'm getting excited. Getting I'm, speaking excited. Too fast. I'm, I'm speaking too fast. When I get really excited, I speak too fast. But there are some phenomenal scuba diving opportunities over there. Hmm. So you may want to check this one out. Yeah. Whew. Sorry. I just, I'm just i just getting a bit. I do like my... I'm literally currently uh, shopping for some new gears, actually, for some of our uh, uh, upcoming trips. Yes. I'm really, yeah, very keen right now. Anyway, uh, Mohsen says... Uh, so emoji guy says, Robin missed my comments. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh yeah. He say, when I see big trees, I always go for hugging the trees. Thanks for the awesome recommendations about <laughs> Oakland. Yeah. There's yes. some good trees in Albert park to hook as well. Thank you very much for reminding me in a nice way that I forget you forgot your comment. That's very polite and very nice. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Chandler says, I've seen some awesome footage of whales in Tonga too. Yeah, definitely check out uh, check out. We have a video on this channel where, where I do the complete guide of Tonga. There's some videos of us swimming with whales in there. Uh, check out TongaPocketGuide.com, largest travel guide to Tonga. We've done that. We love it. You've got to go, mate. <laughs> I've got to convince you to go there. What else can I say to convince you to add one week in Tonga to your trip to New Zealand? What, like, in, how do we make that deal? If right you're here? if you're so if you're really into scuba diving and snorkeling, then you absolutely yes. have to go swimming with whales. It is it is a life changing yeah. experience. Yes, you go there, you land in the island of Tongatapu, you you do the five minute flight. It's five minute flight to Ewa. You stay at a blue water retreat. You stay with people which are working well conservation. They're also, they're gonna take you scuba dive. You will love it. Yes. Okay. What else can I say to convince you, Chandler? How can I send you to Tonga? I, th I think he's already convinced. Yes, he I, has I, to. I'm already convinced. I want to go back. All right. Well, um, yeah. So Claire was talking about swimming in the beach. So yes, we yeah. answered that question. That was good. Uh, Claire says, have a good one. So he's basically wrapping it up. Um, printing shop says, I really like New Zealand because South Africa and New Zealand, same weather. I wish I visited one day. You will. The borders will open. It will have to. Um, Printing Shop says also the smallest dolphins in New Zealand. Where are the smallest dolphins in New Zealand? Uh, a really good place to see them are in Akaroa, which is near Christchurch on the South Island. So the smallest dolphins, they're called Hector's dolphins. Yeah. And uh, Chandler says, both of you are getting me excited. Yes, but is that putting you across the line? Does it make you book your trip? I want you to book your trip <laughs> i get nothing out of it i'm not selling you a trip i just want you to go visit tonga because it's so amazing um and also give us um clay is asking new zealand to tonga prices oh i can't recall well the prices will obviously change post covid as you know a lot of airline uh, airfares have gone up quite a lot after covid yeah. but um, before covid we spent i mean yeah it was uh, it's worth about a thousand four hundred New Zealand dollars for two people return, so yeah. it's not that crazy expensive. If you're in the USA, a uh, Chandler, uh, I'm going to transfer that for you. Uh, 
that's about that's about like say 900 us uh return for two people so it's not terrible it's pretty good but that was before covid price probably would have gone up by yeah. now yeah but yeah chandler head to tonga and seriously plan your trip there it's really awesome uh cannot stress that enough it's pretty good okay um Chandler says, I'm uh, planning on moving to Australia next year and plan to explore New Zealand and hopefully the rest of the South Pacific when I'm over there. Good call. Yeah. Also, why moving to Australia? Move to New Zealand. Mate, let's just change your plan. <laughs> let's just change it. All right. <laughs> anyway, on that note, guys, I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with us for an entire hour right now and seeing all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. Uh, remember, the big news, the big uh, news item, uh, there is going to be a big announcement about the border opening happening on the 12th of August, which is on Thursday. We will cover that on the channel. So subscribe and we'll be uh, making a video. You'll get a notification. We will do that for you guys. Another news is that all of our other videos, not the live session, but all of our other videos come out at 7 p.m. from now on. So we just changed the schedule a little bit around. And yeah, if you feel like sharing a bit of our content, uh, clicking like, clicking subscribe, that'd be good. We have way less views than the usual at the moment. So I don't know what's happening. But yeah, we're going to try a few different things. And if sadly that doesn't work, well, that means we have to do less content because we get less people watching it. So yeah, hopefully things go better. Maybe it's just because it's winter and people don't want to do anything. I, I hope it's that. Perhaps. But anyway... Uh, like Christina says, have a wonderful week. Laura, what's the last word of the day today? The last word? Yeah. Are you looking for a last nope. word in just, particular? Just, just what do you want to say? Kia ora. Here you go. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Why was I looking for something specific? I thought they were maybe trying to uh, tell me something. I